In this video, I'm going to show you how to use a T account for retained earnings. So there are three main accounts that affect retained earnings. When a company posts net income, retained earnings is going to go up. When it posts a net loss, retained earnings is going to go down. And when the company declares dividends, retained earnings is also going to go down. So for example, if we started with retained earnings of $40 and the company had net income, let's say of $60, We'd have net income of 60, we credit the retained earnings, and then did dividends, let's say of $20, then we would have $100 minus 20, so we would have a credit balance of $80 for retained earnings. So let's do another example. Let's say we got a company, Vegetable Donuts, right? We need to make sure those donuts are nice and healthy and they're made of broccoli and so forth. So they posted net income of $50 during 2018. Retained earnings was $100 as of January 1st, 2018, and then $120 as of December 31st. So our beginning balance is $100. So let's set up this T account. So we've got $100, okay, and then we get to $120. And we have $50 of net income that occurs during the period. Now, I don't have to tell you what the dividends are. I do have it here, but just ignore it. Just pretend like you didn't see that. So we see 150 of credits, but we end up at 120 as our balance. So 150 minus 120 is 30. So there must be $30 of dividends here because we had 100 we started with, we credited for 50 for the net income, and then we debited it for 30. Now, to be fair, there are accounts other than net income slash net loss and, and dividends that do affect the retained earnings account. For example, if there's a cumulative adjustment due to a new accounting rule and so forth. But these are the main things. We got net income, we got net loss, and then we've got dividends. Now, you might be wondering, well, what if, what if we had some kind of situation where we actually got to a debit balance for retained earnings? So let's do that. Let's go with that. So let's say that there, there are no dividends here. So let's say we've got zero dollars of dividends. And let's say that we, so we still have the retained earnings of 100, let's stick with that. But let's say that we just forget about what the ending balance is gonna be. And we just say that we have a net loss, a net loss of $300. Okay, so now here's the setup. I changed some things. Retained earnings was $100 at the beginning. So we got $100, that's our beginning balance. There are no dividends, so we don't have to worry about debiting retained earnings for dividends. Now, we, I have 100 at the beginning, but then we have a net loss of $300. Now, if we had net income, the 300 would go here, but it's a net loss, so it's gonna decrease retained earnings, so we're gonna put it over here. So now, what we have is we have $100 in credits, $300 in debits, so we are gonna have a debit balance. For retained earnings so we are going to have so now what happens when you have a debit balance for retained earnings is you have accumulated more losses than profits throughout the company's history uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to change the name of this it's still the same account but we're going to change the name so that it makes more sense on the balance sheet and we're going to call it accumulated deficit accumulated de if you see that for a company sometimes with like startups and stuff you'll see accumulated deficit what that means is the company has accumulated more losses then it has profits, and we see that, that that makes sense here. They posted a net loss, and they had started with retained earnings of $100. So now at the beginning of next period, instead of saying, oh, we've got retained earnings of X, it'll say at the beginning, they have an accumulated deficit of $200. Now let's say next period, they have net income of $500 and no dividends. Dividends are zero. This is next period now. I hope I'm not confusing you. Okay, so this was the ending balance of uh, retained earnings, which is now accumulated deficit for this period. We ended with accumulated deficit of 200. But next period, we have net income of 500 and dividends of zero. So then we would have an ending balance at the end of that period of retained earnings of $300. And how did I get that? Well, the ending balance of this period is 200 accumulated deficit. So you think about that as negative $200 of retained earnings. But then at the next period, you have net income of 500. 500 minus that accumulated deficit of 200 gets you to a $300 retained earning balance at the end of next period.